That's what I do. So my name is Borino and I'm happy you're here because I have some ideas to share. Today we're going to have a special broadcast, special show where I want to give you five secrets, five, five strategies, tips to help you with expired listings because right now is a great opportunity waiting for you. So that's what we'll talk about. I keep you very interactive. I answer your questions. Hey Karen, good to have you. Let's say hi to some friends. Karen here, Winston saying, checking in. Mr. Rob wishing good morning everybody. Grace is with us. Hey Grace, my path student John is here. <laughs> love. You guys love the intro, it's fun, right? What about my hat? I like the hat, right? Hey Dominique, good to have you. Welcome you guys. So, I might take it off during my presentation because um, it's pretty warm. But anyway, I have gifts for you, so that's why I carry it. A Borino Santa has some stuff for you. But before we get into all that, now is your chance. Right now, we are in the window where as the year is ending, there will be a spike of expired listings and it never fails. This happens in almost every market and it happens every year. Here's what happens. We are about here. So this is December 1st, this is December 31st, and here is January 30th, right? January 31, okay? So we are here. This window, and I'm going to do it full color for you because that's how much, guys, I love you. We're not going to spare any expense on you guys. <laughs> it's all good. So somewhere here and here, this is your golden window. These are the dollars. Because what's going to happen is, this is what's been happening. The level of expires in most markets, not that high. Things have been moving, things have been selling. Not so much. Last six weeks or so, you've noticed some changes, right? You've noticed some shifts. So the number of expires is going up, 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 up. Once we hit this spike right here, which will be about December 21st, it's going to skyrocket like this. And it's going to last about January 10th. This is your opportunity right there. And I have some of you reported 200, 300 new expired, 500 expired listings. Now remember, these are people who tried to sell, who are already in the process. This is not just some crowd that you have to sift through, cold calling, door knocking, sending mailers, running Facebook ads and all that. These are people waving their hands saying, over here, we're thinking about selling. These are definitely high probability leads worth talking to. And there'll be a whole chunk of them. So think about it. If you had 200 potential good quality leads, sellers, at your fingertips, could you convert some of them into listings? Would it be possible? Today I want to give you five tips that will help you connect with these people, build connection and relationship with them, and down the road, at least with some of them, convert into good listings, good sellers, good clients. Fair enough? So that's the plan. Now, I have an envelope here that has not been open. It's been ripped a little, but that's okay. UPS, you know they're busy, it's Christmas. Inside there is a surprise for you, but we'll talk about it later. My students, what did I just do? Do you guys recognize the technique I just did? You probably did, right? Anyway, I wanted to tell you, I don't want to forget. So now, what we're going to talk about is how to get these people. What do you do in your market? What are you going to need? Some tools you're going to need, some approach you're going to need, and how to cash on, cash on it. Here is why. If you have, let's just 200 potential sellers, if you're just 200, you can set up 2019 to be your best year ever. That can be a phenomenal source of listing. This is what I always call the low-hanging fruit. If you're struggling and having a hard time converting expired, something is wrong. If this guy from Czechoslovakia figured out a system that got me from being homeless to being well, comfortable, let's call it that, you know, traveling, Mercedes, the whole thing, you can do it too. It just requires a sequence of steps, what I call a system. You need to have a system. So I want to break it down for you today. Cool, would that be time well spent? Are you guys excited about that? Yes. All right, good. So let me give you all five. And I'm going to answer your questions, of course. I'm going to help you with all this. So let's get started. First one, get good data. That's strategy number one, important. Get good data on these folks. Yes, you can just use MLS. That's fine. It's good enough to get you started. But, you know, the days were in the MLS, you had the seller's phone number, the seller's first name, seller's last name. Most MLSs strip it all for privacy concerns. Years ago, that was easy. Today, you need better data. Why? For a couple of reasons. It will make you faster and more efficient. That's number one. And number two, your competition is using it. 
So subscribe to a data provider that can get you good expired listing data. There are several of them out there. There's Landvoice, there's Red X, there's Vulcan 7. The one I recommend is Espresso Agent. Comparing to like the quality of the data and a budget, they're good. They're pretty good. None of them is perfect. None of these data providers is perfect. You're not going to get perfect 100% clean data because a lot of it depends on your geographical location, on how clean the data is in the MLS to begin with. And for our friends in Canada, you're screwed. You can't get that, unfortunately. So this only works in the US. But try Espresso. Just use the code Borino if you want. We have an affiliate agreement with them. So if you use Borino, you can try it for $21 for the first 30 days. But that's step one. You need to have good data because we're going to get into strategy number two. And this is where so many agents screw up. So you're here because you believe expires can be a good source of business. You're here because 2018 may not have been your best year ever. My job is to help you, to inspire you, and to show you that I literally in 10 months went from homeless, sleeping in a fucking car. I bought my own condo. I bought a Mercedes. I took my back then girlfriend to Italy, to Venice on a vacation. And life was good because I started working with people who wanted to move. So, mistakes most agents make when they say, okay, 2019, New Year resolution. I'm going to change things. I'm going to do this thing that Borino talks about. I'm going to start working expired listings. So what do they do? They scrape up some phone numbers, they call, they get rejected, and they're like, well, expireds don't work. Big problem. You got to open all channels. You notice that majority of phone calls these days is either your mom nagging you or a sales guy. The phone has changed. And a lot of the phone calls you get these days are sales solicitation. What I mean is this, phone is still good. It's still a very important part of your approach. And I'll tell you why in just a moment and how to use it. But just remember, it's not the approach. Nothing is the approach. Whatever they tell you, the coaches or so-called coaches who never sold a house in their life, let alone expired, it's never just one solution. It's never just one golden answer, one magic bullet. It's always a multiple set of channels. Let me give you an example. I live in an area just outside of Washington, D.C. And it's kind of, you know, a little crusty, <laughs> a little stuffy, but it's a nice area. It's called Lake Barcroft. We're, we have a lovely lake here. And those are pretty large older homes, and so is the clientele. Most people in my area are in their 50s, in their 60s, and some in their 70s. They've been here for quite some time. The turnover is not super high. There is some. But you got a lot of lawyers. Look at a lot of government contractors, government people. We have senators and congressmen, those, those kind of people. And very often, those kind of client, that kind of clientele is not on social media. They're not, that, not as populated on, let's say, Facebook, is your average 20, 30 somethings. You know, the first time buyers, the Generation X and all that. These folks run their own businesses. They're usually doctors, attorneys, lawyers, judges, that kind of clientele. So to think that one channel like Facebook is the magic answer, especially if you want to dominate this area, would be a mistake. Because you would use a channel that doesn't communicate to your target audience. Are you with me? So now, in order for you to succeed with expireds, you master all channels. You open all communication channels. In this area, social media, eh, not so hot. What would work here? Follow the process. You call first. Get a phone number from a good data provider, you call them. Short little simple two-minute conversation. Now, here is again where so many agents screw up. The phone call does not, in 99% of the cases, lead to a listing appointment. That's not why we're calling. Why is that? Think about it this way. Would you ask a date to marry you on a first date? Probably not, right? That would probably be a slap in the face and a little bit of a creepy vibe. Why? Because there's not enough connection, not enough trust. So now imagine you're an expired listing, you're a seller, you're thinking about selling, you're still motivated, you still want to move, you hired the wrong agent. That's usually what happens. And now somebody calls, a stranger calls, and they get into a conversation. They start reciting some script, ask some questions, and the next thing you know, they try to push you for a listing appointment. To them, you're a perfect stranger. To them, you can be a serial killer. To them, you are nobody. They have no reason to trust you, let alone communicate with you, and say, okay, come on down, we want to sign the listing contract with you. 
occasionally it happens. Occasionally you will hit it off. Occasionally you will build that contact, that connection. But most of the time it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean you're screwing it up. It just means you need to take baby steps. That's what my expired system is all about, taking these easy, simple baby steps. So what is the purpose of the call? Number one, the number one objective you have is to figure out if it was real estate, if it was back on the market. Because you know how it is. Some agents don't put in MLS right away, some drag their feet, or something has changed, or the MLS system is not that flexible yet, or not up to speed yet. You want to eliminate everybody who's back on the market, whether with the current agent or somebody else. Make sense? That is the number one objective you have with the phone call. That's it. Because here's what's going to happen. You have an expired listing. Okay. Now, several things can happen with that expired. Some properties, there'll be some, who will never realize, never go back on the market. They tried once, and it could be because their life has changed, you know, the circumstances have changed, or they were not that motivated in the first place. Something has changed. Moving has not become important, or it ceased to be an important. The problem they would sell, solve by selling the property ceased to be a problem. That's group number one. Group number two will go on the market with the same agent. They will list with the same agent. And very often there's not much you can do about it. There's no magic script about, well, let me show you my magic marketing plan. Well, let me show you how I am different. That's not going to get you very far. In most cases, occasionally, yes. But the reason they go back to the agent is just one word. One simple word. That's why you get all the business. They trust them. They already have a relationship with them. And what they believe, well, you know, this guy is not the greatest, but at least we know he's not a crook, he's not going to kill anybody, he's not going to steal our dog, <laughs> so we're just going to go back with him. Yeah? So not much here that can be done. But then there is a third group that will go on the market with a different agent. What color do you guys want? Do you want green? We'll go green. This is the group you're after. That's who you're after. So the first and easiest way to determine that I want to talk to these people is I'll have a free, free phone, call, phone call with them and I'll trust them. You guys are back on the market? Have you realized it yet? If they say anything other than yes, I don't care, and mark this, this is very important, hear me on this. If they say anything other than yes, we have realized if they have not realized it's game on, baby. And I don't care a whole lot what the, what's going to follow because after that, I'm going to hear a lot of noise. And then noise is triggered by emotions, which is strategy number three. Understand their emotions. And the reactions and the decisions they give me are not based on logic. What emotions? Frustrated, disappointed, angry, confused, sad. All of these, or combination thereof because the property didn't sell, because they had a dream, they had a desire, they, they built some kind of construct saying, if we move, if we sell this sucker and move somewhere else, ooh, life will be good. You with me? Does that make sense? So it's going to be emotions, I'm going to hear all kinds of stuff. Like we're going to stay and we already have an agent, we're going to go back to our previous agent. Remember, the only thing that will disqualify them if they already realistic. Other than that, here's what I found. Through years of trial and error, testing all this and learning the hard way, which probably cost me $100,000 in commissions. Most. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> so here's what's going to happen. I approached them, or here's what happened. I approached it. Nice person, opens the door, we have a nice conversation. I introduce myself, we chat for a little while, and he says, you know what, no, we're not going to go. We decided to stay. And I take it at the face value. I leave. Nice people. Awesome. Here's my card if you change your mind. You ever use that line? <laughs> I leave. Six weeks later, my competitor just signed in the front yard. I'm like, what the hell? They just told me a few weeks ago they're not going, they're staying for sure, and thanks for stopping by. If they change their mind, they're going to call me. They never called me. Has that ever happened to you? So what I understood after a while, that's <laughs> too long, is that they're driven by emotions at first. They're driven by all these negative emotions, distrust, disappointment. And you know how it is when you have something big you have to decide on, it doesn't go very well, it collapses on you. How many times do you say, well, fuck it, I'm just not going to deal with it. I'm not going to deal with this. I'm done with this. But then there is another emotion that starts creeping up. 
and that's hope. And that's the one you need to focus on. Hope. Hope it can be done. Hope they can still sell. Hope still get a decent price for it. Hope they can still get that condo down in Florida. Hope there is still an agent who can get this done, somebody who they can trust again. What they're comparing are two emotions. It's the fear. Variation, they're always like anger, disappointment. It's just the levels of fear. And hope. And once fear is still up, they're going to stay stuck. Once the hope starts taking over, they'll be open to conversation. Here's where I screwed up. I focused on people who were going right back on the market without realizing that everybody else who said no, and there'll be plenty of no's, is still a great pool of prospects. Which leads me to the next strategy. The power of your system, whether you're going to come with me and I'll teach you how to do all this and I'll help you build the system together, or you do it on your own, is twofold. Open the channels. So this is first part and this is the second part. It's a two part. But the conversion happens right here. Follow up. Follow up. It is the most important. Make a good first impression here, whether you call, you text, you visit. Visit. One day I will learn how to spell that. <laughs> but the power of the conversion, where the money is, where the listings are, where the business is, where the good stuff is, where the clients are, is right here in your follow-up. Because it is through the follow-up you develop a sense of connection. They start recognizing your name. They recognize your face because they see your video, they see your emails, they see your, your, your face on your marketing materials, on your letters, on your postcards. Everywhere they, they go, everything they receive from you has a very congruent message. This is who I am, this is what I do, this is why you can trust me. It's through that repetition of the follow-up you start building the trust and connection that's necessary to feel hope. My rule is this, place rises down. With every single expired, I would try five touches. I would reach out five times, whether I reach them for the first time or not, doesn't matter. But I would give everybody at least five chances before I drop them. Five. So many agents throw a good lead out of the window just because they were told no the first time. Big waste. Lots of opportunities there. Because what's going to happen is some will go on the market right away, but some will take their time. And this can be days, this can be weeks, even months. And it depends just on only two things. Their motivation, how bad do they want to move, and the sense of hope, how much they trust somebody. Those two emotions drive it, that's it. Make sense so far? Are you guys with me? So what I'm going to do is utilize this time to build my trust, to build connection with them, and to keep in touch no matter what. Because even after several no's, suddenly I would get a call or an email, or I would get a text, I would get a page. Remember pagers? <laughs> I would get a page. Or I would call and say, man, you're persistent. Let's sit down, let's talk, which is what I wanted. And I use this process to really get to know their situation, to really understand what is it that they really want, and this is a big one, why? Why do they want to live in Florida? Why do they want that condo? What matters to them about that? I want to understand as much as I possibly can about two things. What is it they're trying to accomplish and how bad do they want it? What is the problem? Because once I understand their problem, once I understand how big the problem that is, I can offer a solution. You don't have a client, you don't have a prospect if they don't have a problem. Let me put it in a different perspective. If you had a good year this year, and if you don't have a problem, if you're not stuck, or if you don't feel like 2019 has to be better, I don't, I don't have no solution for you. Why would you be here? You know what I mean? If you say, well, shit, if 2019 is as good as 2018, I'm okay. We don't have to work together. You're fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. You gotta improve. Because the market is shifting, the competition is getting stiffer, it's getting competitive out there, especially when things slow down, you need to kind of sharpen your saw. But if you say, well, shit, Barino, I need to add 10 extra deal, 20 extra deal. I want to add 100 grand to my bottom line. Then let's talk. Same concept. Your seller must have some kind of a problem, some kind of situation that will be solved by you coming in and saying, look, we can get this sucker sold. We can put some nice amount of cash in your pocket and you can get that count down in Florida. But you as an expert need to know Por qué? What is it? What drives them? 
And you can't just barge in on your first meeting and say, so what are you guys doing? Why does it matter to you? They'll be like, whoa, 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 whoa. He's their salesman. He's their Grand Cardone. <laughs> you got to soften it up a little and build some trust and connection where they say, well, you know, I will give you this information, but I don't want to be manipulated because that's what the assholes do. The stuff I teach, which is the core influence, the advanced communication, can be used for some serious manipulation if you don't watch it. And I don't want you to do that. I want you to be cool and pleasant. Make sense? So you find out their why, now you have something to work with. Now you can start incorporating in your communication, in your solution to them. Make it about them. It's all about them. Desperate agents come in because they need a listing. Their follow-up is, hey, just wanted to check in to see if you're ready to list. Fuck off. That's terrible. That's horrible. You come in and you explore. Well, let me ask you a question, guys. What if you get that condo in the next two months? Would that work for you? If you could have it any way you wanted to, would you be better off staying here? Or would you rather move? Here's the important part about that question. You don't try to force them to a solution. They always have the freedom to make their own mind. And through this process that I teach you, not only you will get clear, but they will get clear. Because I would rather discover through the follow-up and couple of conversations that the seller's motivation is almost non-existent, that they can stay in their property for another five years, it's not a problem. That their pool or the excitement of living somewhere else is no big deal. It doesn't matter to them a whole lot. The problem of selling the house is not that big of a problem. They're fairly comfortable there. I don't want to work with people like that. Because they will be difficult, penny-pinching, negotiating, rejecting good offers, and being pain in the butt. I'd rather have the driven ones, the motivated ones. Now, guess what? Through the right process, through the right conversation, communication, and a follow-up, I can fairly quickly start dist distinguishing and determining who is who. And yes, it will require some practice, which leads me to the strategy number five. You got to practice this thing. Practice. You know, I have two kids and a lovely wife. Some of you know my wife Hannah and the kids. And uh, we have a music teacher, Mr. Chris, who is phenomenal. Mr. Chris Talbert comes to our house every Tuesday. He'll be here today. And they practice. My daughter plays piano, my son plays trumpet, and Hannah picked up guitar. She started about six months ago to start taking lessons from uh, Chris Talbert. And every six, seven months, Mr. Talbert, who has about 20 students or so, invites the parents and the family to a recital and they have a performance. And last Saturday, my wife, for the very first time, Hannah, for the very first time, performed in front of a live audience. Before she started taking lessons six months ago, she had never played an instrument, never, never took any music lessons or anything. So you can imagine how nerve-wracking it must be for someone to stand in front of a real audience play a real song. Now, the cool thing is not only did she perform, but she performed together with my son and my daughter. So they had a little band going, which was so touching, was so beautiful. How did she get there to the point where she could confidently stand in front of an audience, play a guitar, and sing a lovely song? You want to know the secret? It's not talent. Talent helps. Talent is about this much. Can you guys see it? Yeah. This is talent. This is what got her on the stage. Practice. It's just like with anything else. You don't have talent to call people on the phone. You don't have the talent to work expired listings. I have no talent. I have zero talent. I have no magic power or special skills. What got me there was I practiced. I practiced how to talk to people. I practiced and was able to distinguish very quickly. Wouldn't it be great if you knew within after a couple of conversations whether somebody's going to move or not? Wouldn't it be great to have the ability to build trust within seconds? where you break down the barrier very quickly, you know what it takes? It's a set of steps. It's a sequence. It's a sequence of things that you do. Like if you watch me, if you watch me do role plays, if you, if you are on my confident communication, notice that I do certain things over and over. For example, I smile. It's just one of the techniques that's very disarming, that creates a very pleasant vibe, that invites people to talk to you, that breaks down the barrier, the distrust, and kind of discomfort of talking to salespeople, which is where you stand at the beginning. That's where you start. How do I get there? I practiced. That's the secret. So you want to master this stuff, it's going to take some repetition. Now the good news is, you don't have to spend months and months and months drilling it. You can get up to speed very quickly. It will depend on your intensity and your desire, how quickly you can master this. But you can. And I'm not good at very many things. I'm not. I'm really not. 
but I'm really good at teaching this stuff. I'm good at breaking down so, something so complex and making it simple. So let's recap. Get good data first on the expires. Do it right away. The window is opening and it's not going to stay open for a very long time. Number two, open all channels of communication with, with the expired listings. Some you will reach on the phone, but it's no big deal if you don't. There's still plenty of opportunity. You can text them, you can email them, you can visit them, you can put them on mailings. There's all kinds of things you can be doing with these folks. And the more channels you open, the less of a competition you have because I promise you, most of your competition is not very competent, not very determined, and definitely not as focused as you are. So you're going to open all these channels. Next, you're going to focus on if they're not realistic, you understand it's game on. You're not going to discard good leads just because they tell you we're going to go back to our previous agent. The rule I want you to apply is until the contract is signed, it's game on. I don't pay much attention at the beginning to what they tell me. Now, if they continuously tell me, you know what, my job transfer didn't go through, or we're getting divorced, or my wife ran away with, I don't know, George Clooney. <laughs> yes, there may be events and circumstances that clearly indicate they don't want to move, they don't want to do anything. But if I have a hunch, and many times it's just like an instinct feeling because there is no logical explanation. Why? Because it's driven by their emotion. I focus on the emotion. I start offering different scenarios. Well, John, let me ask you. Buyer walks in tomorrow. Suitcase full of cash. They fall in love with the house. Would you at least consider taking an offer? And you'd be surprised how many people have, who at the beginning had told you, no, absolutely, we're not moving. They'll be like, well, you know, if the price was right. <sighs> what am I introducing? A sense of hope. Are you with me? All right. Next, focus on the follow-up. Keep in touch. You're going to need some CRM. Get a decent contact relationship management. Jump on LionDesk. You can use follow-up balls. There's Realty Juggler. There's Top Producer. There's Agza Contact and 20 others. Just get one. None of them is perfect, just like with the data providers. None of them is perfect, but good enough to get your business. Trust me. So get the follow-up going. Don't drop them at least five or ten. Don't give up too soon. Big mistake. And the next, practice. Get good at this stuff. Do the math with me. Let's say, and again, your numbers are different. I don't want to blow smoke up your ass, but do the, do the math with me. See if this would make sense. If you have a whole bunch of expires and you say, okay, I'm going to listen to this crazy guy, Barino, and I'm going to do what he says, and every day I'm going to talk to two. Can you have two conversations, two expires? Is that doable? High probability leads. Maybe new expires, old expires, doesn't matter. Somebody who tried once. Two conversations a day, and you did five days a week. That's 10 conversations a week. You with me? All right. So now, let's say next year, you're going to intensely work and be dedicated, committed, real estate expert, rock star, and you're going to do it for 240 days. So that's 240 times 2 is 480 conversations. You work 240 days, you take some time off, vacations, sick days, holidays, all that stuff. You do 480 conversations in the next 12 months. The question I have is this. And it's an important one, I want you to really listen. If you practiced, had a good follow-up in place, understood the emotional process of their decision-making, focused on those that have not relisted and understood that it's going to take a few contacts to convert them, if you opened all communication channels and started with a good data to begin with, and had 480 conversations with motivated sellers, where you know a big chunk of those will go back on the market if you just check MLS, it's statistics. Out of those 480, how many do you think you can convert into clients and listings? And be conservative. What do you think? In the next 12 months, out of 480 of these leads that you have a conversation with, how many? Now, be really conservative. Be really like, dude, I really suck at it. And whatever <laughs> excuses you have, it's all good. So what if it was 5%? I mean, shit, if I did just 5%, I kicked myself in the ass. But your numbers are different because it requires skill, it requires system, it requires marketing, it requires all these things. But 5% is what, 24? So if you got 24 listings in my area, it would be about easy math. It's more, but I'm not good with math. So it's $10,000 a commission. So that's $240,000, give or take about a quarter of a million dollars. In my area, this is if I was to do this, not you. Two conversations a day, quarter of a million dollars. with me? Two conversations a day. Quarter of a million 
dollars? What if you got really good at it? What if you got my help? I'd crack my wit, dude. I'd say, dude, 5%? You're thinking small. Something is broken. Now, yes, there is more to it than that, of course. I can make you an expired rock star in one broadcaster. Absolutely, there's more to it than that. But what if you did just this and did that? Is that doable? See, what I'm here today is not only to teach you some practical strategies. I want the same for you. And that is a sense of hope that there's business out there, there are clients out there, there are opportunities out there, and it's less, less complicated than you think. It's less, less expensive. This is not an expensive process. And it doesn't require 167 different steps because nobody's going to do it. I know I wouldn't. Yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah, look at what Aaron is saying. Getting 12 to 18 expires a day in our market. A year ago, it was 4 to 8. Big opportunity in 2019. Price them right and crush it. That's the idea, Aaron. Now, how do you crush it? Start with good data. Do the best you can. I mean, if you don't have their phone number, no big deal. What's the next thing you can do? Can you email them? Maybe. What if you can't? Can you knock on the door on Saturday morning? Can you visit them? Can you mail them something? Absolutely. That's how it's done. And the more complicated it is to get in touch with the seller, the more steps or research it requires and or effort and investment, the less competition you're going to have. Seriously. That's one of the biggest revelations I had. So now, let me talk to you about this. Let me open it up. I have not seen this package yet. Pull the tab. Pulling the tab. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't want to rip it. Open it like Casey Neistat. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, what you're looking at here is brand spanking new prototype of Expired Plus 5.0. This is a brand new book, brand spanking new. Look at that. That's your Coach Barino right here. We just went to print with it. I rewrote the book, added some stuff to it, updated it. It's brand spanking new. I made a mess here. <laughs> so, I would like you to have it. It has a lot of good information. This is just kind of an overview of what's in here. Plus, it has a marketing library, it has all kinds of stuff. So, how do you get it? Some of you. We'll be already getting it. It's going to be on the way. It's the boot camp. If you join me for the Expired Plus boot camp, we're starting this week on Thursday. You will get one of those bad boys. It's brand new. It's pretty cool. So now, we closed the registration last night because not only are we full, but we need to ship you these things and we need to get you up to speed because our first orientation is on Thursday. But then a bunch of you came and says, dude, I had trouble with my credit card, the transaction didn't go through, or I missed the deadline, I want in. I like you guys. I'm Santa. I'm going to be cool and nice. So for the next 60 minutes, I reopened the registration. Here is where you can get on it. If you go to goborino.com slash bootcamp, you can take it. Now, this book, you can buy. You can buy the whole system. It's $397. It's pretty good. You get the video course, you get the book, you, you get the marketing library and all that. It's nice. It's $397. Every two to two or three times a year, I teach the boot camp, where not only you get the system, you get the videos, you get everything, you get me for four weeks. Because I don't want you to just absorb the information. I want to crack my whip and actually help you put the system together. So 2019, you're going to smoke it. That's the idea. Where it's not a class. I don't call it a class. I don't call it a workshop. I don't call it a webinar, although it is online, but it's live, it's interactive, where I put my sergeant's hat. I'm into hats, can you tell? I put my sergeant's hat. You want to see? I can show you. I actually have a United States Marine Corps drill sergeant's hat that I wear at the beginning of the boot camp. Watch this. Sudden change from Santa to sergeant. Sergeant Borino in the house. <laughs> a tear hat! <laughs> so I want to help you build it. Put it together, practice it, implement it, use it, start getting results immediately. How fast? Well, that'll be up to you. How fast can you apply? How fast can you move? How important is it for you to get to some, some goals? That's the question. So I want to help. So we're going to open it. I think it's open right now for 60 minutes. For those of you who struggled, couldn't get in, who would like to make a difference in 2019, there'll be four live classes in January. 
I'm going to break down the system for you. I'm going to teach you step by step. I'm going to show you how the marketing works. I'm going to explain to you the psychology. We're going to set up your follow up. I'm going to help you with the communication, handling objections, setting up appointments, the whole nine yards. The exact process that helped me go from sleeping in a freaking car to living a good life. And whatever good life is to you, money, peace of mind, good clients, all that is out there for you. So I want to help you. All right, let's take your questions. So here's the URL again. If you want to join us, goborian.com slash bootcamp. It's only $197. It's my bribe because I started this coaching program that I'm really proud of that I think is really good called The Path. So if you join the bootcamp, you can join it for free. You only pay $197 membership to The Path. Now, when the bootcamp finishes and you say, Borino, I'm out, perfect. No questions asked, no hard feelings. There are no gimmicks. We're not going to try to convince you to stay. There'll be no sales pitch or any of that. But I believe once you get the taste of it, what's what you're capable of and what I can do as your coach, I think you're going to stay. 197 bucks a month, you get all my systems, you get all the programs, you get all the support, live training, there's a whole bunch of stuff there. But let's not jump ahead. Let's just focus on the expireds first. I want you to succeed with that. I want to give you a taste of what's out there and how with the right system and guidance, you can get there very quickly. That's my objective, to make you successful. And if that's all you want from me, cool. I'm happy with that. My job is done. Está bien? All right. Joseph just signed up. Excellent. Good to have you, Joseph. Carrie's laughing. She's loving it. Yes, if you want to jump on it, we, we have to close it down. And it's not a sales gimmick. But we need to get you the books and we need to be in the orientation. So that's why we, we need to do it now. So if you missed it, you can go back, go to goborino.com slash bootcamp, register, we'll ship you the stuff, you get access, instant access to all of that stuff, and you get an invitation to the Thursday orientation class. Raymond says, hell yeah. <laughs> Heather says, was approached to list a short sale. How do you feel about them? Sorry if it's off topic. It's not really off topic because if the market will continue sliding and in the markets, in some markets it's already happening, many, especially expireds, will be short sales. Here's how I feel about them. If you have other opportunities, start with those. But it's all you got is a short sale, do them. Learn how to do them. Warning, short sales can be pain in the butt. They're definitely time consuming. They take a longer time to work. They take more effort and sometimes at the end, you're still not gonna get paid. So if you look at your marketplace, Heather, and if you see like, I must do short sales because a big chunk of my market is sliding into short sales. That was my case. When I started in real estate in 1744, <laughs> we had about 40% was bank owned property, short sales, foreclosures. It was a shitty market from a seller's perspective. Very competitive. Things are moving slowly. We had 13, 14, 15% interest rates. It was crazy. So we didn't have a choice. It was like, hey, this is what it is. You got to make it work. So it depends on your marketplace. and also depends how aggressive you are in pursuing your goals. But if we're going to continue seeing the slide in some of the areas, it's going to be unavoidable. So get good working with short sales, understand that you're working with emotional seller, a bank, or whoever is holding the trust. It's, it can be a mess. All right. Joseph would like to know if the new book is part of the bootcamp. Yes, absolutely. You're going to get the 5.0. Oh my God, when can I order? Right now, Dominic. Rush right now. Please go to goborino.com slash bootcamp would love to have, especially you, Dominic, you've been around. Uh, great says, ooh, ah. Victor, Borino, I work short sales in Los Angeles area. What do you think or any good approach on NODs? Victor, uh, a lot of the approach I teach you is the same. It's the human approach. It's not a sales approach. But you have to understand several things about NODs and working like pre foreclosures. Number one, you're going to have competition from other agents. That's one. You're going to have competition from a lot of investors and speculators. Number two. And number three, you're going to work with very emotional sellers because they don't just wake up one morning into, an, into a foreclosure or default. That's usually a financial struggle. That may be health issues, bills, that may be um, loss of job. There are all kinds of things that cause them to get in trouble in the first place. So it requires more compassion, more patience. And also knowing that there'll be some guys who are going to walk in and say, hey, here's 20 grand. Why don't you just walk? We'll take over the property or all kinds of offers. But a lot of the stuff I teach you, can you call them? Can you visit them? Can you mail them something? Can you email them? Can you get their data? Some of the data providers, I don't know if Espresso does that or not, but some will give you notices of default that you can work. Would it be my first choice? Absolutely not. 
I would work FISBOs, expireds, new, expireds, old, canceled listings, my sphere, open houses way before I start getting into NODs. That would be my suggestion, to ramp up my inventory. Now, once you have these systems up and running, then yeah, you can look into it. But it wouldn't be my first choice. It wouldn't be my core lead generation. Roxy Zira, Coach Roxy, awesome Coach Roxy, doing our accountability sessions on Monday, which will be part of the bootcamp, by the way. Data provider suggestion, Joseph would like to know. My suggestion would be Espresso Agent. And if you use the code Borino, we are affiliated with them. That means they give us a referral fee if you join them. Use the code Borino. You can try Espresso Agent. Go to EspressoAgent.com. Try the data provider. They give you expireds and FISBOs for the first 30 days for 29 bucks. See how you like it. Different agents, different, different results, you know, depends on your area, your MLS and all these things. So the best way I can recommend is just give it a try. See what you think. Go to EspressoAgent.com. Kerry really loves the hat. Which one? The Christmas hat or the sergeant hat? <laughs> Michael likes the hat, so you guys are liking the hat. Kerry says, yes, can't wait to get it. Yolanda, I signed up last week, looking forward to it. Yolanda, great to have you. Please be patient. We're going to ship the books. They will be going out hopefully this week. So over the holidays, you will have time to absorb it. It's not that big of a read. I mean, the whole book is... Which hat should I put on you guys? You like the Santa hat? All right, we'll do the Santa hat. Let's do the Santa hat. There you go. My ears stick out funny. See that? <laughs> anyway, so the book is about 110 pages, but we use a lot of pictures, graphs. You get the dialogues there, you have the follow-up sequence, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. So, it's on your way. You will get it. Okay. Is the test drive of the path running concurrently with the bootcamp or is it after four-week bootcamp? Dominic, it's running concurrently, so you can check the other materials. It will be actually incorporated. I'll be making reference during the bootcamp to different parts of the path that will help you with resources and answers and systems so you can get up and running. See, my main objective is to get you up and running as quickly as I can while you still have a life, run a business, have a family, <laughs> do other things, poop, sleep, you know, that stuff. So I crammed it into four weeks. So be ready. This will be very intense four weeks because normally to build a system like that and get it really fine-tuned so you're seeing leads and appointments and listings takes about a year, year and a half. It took me a long time and a lot of detours, a lot of dead ends. So we're going to cram it up into four weeks. So what I'm going to need from you is a 100% commitment that you're willing to roll up your sleeves, that you're not expecting shortcuts, you're not expecting magic bullets. You're willing to do the work. And we're going to get it done in four weeks. It's not going to be perfect. There'll be still some needs to fine tune, which you can, do, you can do on your own, or you can stay on the path and I will help you. Because part of the path is live coaching sessions you and I will have together. But it's going to be good enough. You start seeing leads. You start going on appointments. And my hope is you're going to start getting listings. That's the goal. Now, here's the best part. We are putting a system in place that will track exactly what you're doing. So you can fuck around and you can fool me. You can kid me. You can lie to me, but who would win? So every week you're going to report what you've done that week. How much role play have you done? How much practice have you done? How did you move forward on the system? How many experts did you approach? How many appointments? How many listings? All of that will be tracked. So that I can troubleshoot and pinpoint where is the breakdown? Why is it not working if it's not working? And if it is working, can we make it better? Can we get you more listings? Can we get you more money? Okay? So that's, that's part of the program. We're going to crack the whip on you guys. What's a good source to get good phone numbers for the expired listings, Jamil would like to know? My suggestion would be check out Espresso Agent. There are others out there. I mean, you can test drive them all. But when you compare the budget, how much it's going to cost you, and the quality of the data, I think Espresso is a really good choice. Espresso Agent. It's a good, robust system. It has a dialer. It has a CRM built in. It will give you expi uh, expired, new and old. It will give you FISBOs. They will scrub, again, relist it, and they will scrub, scrub against the Do Not Call registry. So I, I like the system. Now, disclaimer, I told you we're affiliated with them, but that's not why I recommend them. We're affiliated with other companies, but this is my number one choice. My number one recommendation, so go check them out. Ross has just signed in. Super happy. Ross, great to have you, my man. Welcome. Shante is still waiting on a package. Please be patient. The reason we have the delay and the reason I'm not starting the bootcamp until January, Shante, is because I wanted you to have the new book. 
That was the goal. That was the idea. And you guys, my, my uh, boot camp students, will be the very first ones to get their hands on it, which I'm really excited about. Joseph says, I need help getting in front of these people. I'm getting 82% of the listings that I go on appointments for. Wow, that's a good closing ratio. That's great. I have that part down. I just need to get in front of more people. I'll help you with that, Joseph. I can totally help you with that. And I'll show you systems, not very complicated systems, to get in front of these people. But dude, 82%, you're rocking it. That's beautiful. Winston, Moreno, do you still use expired package on initial visit? The answer is absolutely yes. I want you to have an expired package. What we're going to do during the boot camp is we're going to put together a package. And it's not too complicated, but it has a cover letter specifically written for expired listings. It has a brochure specifically designed for expired listings. It has some marketing examples. It has a snapshot of the market. This is not a CMA, just kind of a quick overview. So that you have something to leave behind, especially if the expired is not there, you want to make a good first impression, more than just a business card. So yes, we're going to do that. You can leave it, you can hand it to the seller after you have a conversation with them, or you can mail it to them, which is kind of handy, especially if the seller lives out of the area that you still want to, who you still want to reach, okay? So again, I'll show you where to get it, how to put it together, how to make it all work. All part of what we're going to work on. I got Redex from your recommendation. Good, I said, that, that's a good one too. That's what I said, there are plenty out there, plenty. There are a handful. Redex is pretty good, Land Voice is pretty good, Vulcan 7 is pretty good, Espresso Agent is pretty good. My suggestion would be test drive it. Test it. See if you're getting good data. See if it's worth your investment because none of these are free. Okay? So Redex is not a bad choice. Land Voice is not a bad choice. If you have the money, Vulcan is a really good choice. Está bien? All right. Santa baby. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Hey, Shauna. Good to have you. All right, my friends. So... This is the URL real quick, goborino.com slash bootcamp. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Good. One thought that I wanted to give you today. There will be plenty of opportunity next year as there was plenty of opportunity this year to help people to make money to be a good real estate agent. However, Eight out of 10 will not be here next year. That means out of 32,000 people that we have here on Rockstars, some of you will not be here. And that's tough. That, I take it very personally. I take it seriously. Because from a certain perspective, that's a failure. And I don't want my students, whether you pay me or not, doesn't matter. Some, of you, some guys do, some you don't. But I still feel like that's a failure because there is money out there, there are clients out there, there is business out there. Think about it, 5.2 million transactions closed this year. Somebody's making the money, somebody's getting listings, so why not you? Did we lose it? Oops. Looks like we lost the feed for a while. Okay, we're back. Something happened, and we're back. So the question I had was, if there's business out there, if there's 5.2 million transactions closed, what's stopping you? What's stopping you in the past? What stopped you in the past? Now, one of them was probably you didn't have the right system. That's a big one. That very often can cause a problem. You don't have the right system in place. That can be a possibility. But what else? Sometimes it's a mindset. It's a negative voice, right? The, the, the drunken monkey that just keeps blabbing away where you just focus on why it's not working, you focus on how it's hard, you focus on how sellers are assholes, how everybody's overpriced, you focus on the negative and then you get more of that. And sometimes it's the action. Shit, I'm just sweating in this, it's hot as hell. So Santa's taking it off. Sometimes it's lack of action. You got the right mindset. You want the nice things for your family, for your kids, for your spouse, for yourself. You're working on your systems, but it's the action that's not consistent. So the reason I put the bootcamp together, trust me, I'm not going to get rich at $197 a month. $197 is not going to retire me in Bora Bora. The reason I wanted to make it affordable but effective is I wanted to combine all three. The right mindset, the right system and the right action. So whether you're going to come on board and let me help you, which I'd love for you to do, 
Because if you really think about it, unless you make some radical changes, what are the chances of you succeeding in 2019? And honestly, I'm not trying to pitch you or sell you on it. We closed the registration. I was very happy with the people who signed up. We were ready to rock and roll. But it was Roseanne this morning I had a chat with who said, you know, there are a couple of people who would very much like to get back in who didn't make it. So I'm like, well, you know, I don't want to cut them off. I don't want them to feel like, well, Borino fucked me over. I want everybody to have the same opportunity. There's plenty of it out there. But unless you're willing to make some changes in your mindset, in your systems, in your action, bad news, my friends, next year is going to be about the same, if not worse for you. Because it's going to be your competition that's going to get stiffer. It's going to be the sellers who are going to be more challenging to work with because if one day you tell them it's 500,000, if six months later you're going to tell them 450, trust me, it's not going to be that easy. Now, I'm not here to fear monger you. I don't know how long this little slide will, will last. I, maybe we're out of it in January. Who knows? But one thing I do know is with the right mindset, with the right systems, and with the right action, regardless of what market we're in, regardless of what's going on out there, you can succeed. You can set a hefty, ambitious, awesome goals. And you can reach them. It's all within your reach. Use me as an example. There was a guy from Czechoslovakia who came, barely spoke English, sounded like Borat, didn't know anything about real estate, didn't know anybody, zero sphere of influence, didn't know anything about anything, barely spoke the language, became homeless, and then one day said, I'm going to turn my life around. I don't want to live. Forget homeless. You know what scares me more than going back to being homeless? Oh, that freaks me out plenty, trust me. It is mediocrity. It is a missed opportunity. Missed chance to build something awesome. Maybe I'll fail. Maybe I'll fail again. But I am always willing to take that chance striving for something awesome. Not just for me. I mean, there are only so many expensive watches you can wear, so many nice cars. But if I can do it for you guys, if I can do it for my family, that inspires the shit out of me. And I'd rather take a chance and fail. Because if I don't take a chance, the result is guaranteed by default. So I want you to take a chance. I mean, you have nothing to lose. We offer money back guarantee, of course. If you're not happy, if you just feel it's full of shit, this Borino guy doesn't work for me, give me my money, here it is, no worries. But that's not what worries me the most. What worries me the most is that you stay complacent. You settle for good enough. You feel like Toyota Corolla is the best there is. That little apartment is the best there is. Where what I'm offering is a lifestyle giving you enough cash to start buying income properties, to start building wealth, passive income, and more importantly, to have so much peace of mind where you feel like, I got this. I figured it out. I'm a good, successful, respected real estate agent. Because let me share a secret with you. Once, and it took me about 10 months to really rebuild my life, to go from living behind a liquor store in Pico Rivera, California, to moving into a lovely new condo, about 10 months. It was the feeling of accomplishment and being recognized and appreciated it mattered even more than the money. The clients who said thank you. The clients who offered me closing gifts. <laughs> that was a shocker to me. Where there were people show up and say, hey, we got you this as a thank you for your work for us. I got a bottle of wine, I got the dinners, gift certificates from people. That blew me away. It's usually the agent, right? You guys, we, we offer a closing gift. I want you to be at the same level, so recognized and so appreciated and feeling so good about what you do that being in real estate was a good decision, was a smart choice. So your spouse doesn't have to nag you anymore about the lack of income. <laughs> Been there, done that. Mindset, systems, action. Let me help you. Come on board. You can do this, and you can do this on your own. It's just going to take longer, and there'll be some, some detours and some dead ends. Or you can devote four weeks. Now, please, make sure the schedule is fairly clear. Make sure you can come to the live sessions. There'll be one live session a week that I will teach you, a webinar. Yes, they'll be recorded. Yes, you can watch it on replay, but it's different when they're live. You can ask questions, and we can interact and work together. And more importantly, you say, this time it's going to be different. I've never taught this class before, and I really don't know if I'm going to teach it again. I really don't know. Again, this is not a pitch. It's not on the calendar. You have access to my calendar. You people who are on PATH and Listing University can see the calendar. It's not scheduled. This is the only time. 
because I believe this is the time, this is the opportunity. And if you're serious, I'm serious. And hold me to it. Hold my standards high. I hold them really high. I want to deliver the best expired bootcamp there is. My promise to you is there is no better expired bootcamp out there in the world. And I know that's a tall order from a guy who doesn't like hype. I get it. Hold me to it. But the only way we're going to put it to test is if you're willing to not only study the stuff, practice the stuff, but get out there and do it. If you're willing to do that, then I can show you that your limits are way further than you believe they are. Make sense? All right, guys. <laughs> you got to see this comment. I bash on Toyota a lot. I'm sorry, Toyota. Poor Toyota. My wife drives a Lexus, mind you. She got a Christmas, not Christmas, but a birthday gift. I bought her a Lexus. <laughs> I should shut up about Toyota. But you get my point. Don't settle for mediocrity. You don't have to. I mean, unless you're really happy, unless you feel like, dude, I don't want to change a single thing. This is awesome. Then don't fucking settle. It can all be yours. Watches, homes, investments, travel, all of that. All of that can be yours. Christopher has a good question. Ever text them back with what was the plan if the house had sold? That opened some interesting doors. Christopher, you can do that. I don't recommend it. I would start with something more, way easier than that. If you could get a buyer really quickly, would you still consider it? Most of the time they will say no, but here's the cool part. If you text them and they respond, now you started a conversation. Even if it's no, it's still a conversation. Because here's what I have found in most cases. If they're dead set against moving, if they have zero desire in selling, why would they answer? Think about it. Most will just go delete. So even if they say no, psychologically that means more than just a no in some cases, not always, obviously. So even if they say no, I would say thanks, totally understand. May I check back with you in a few months? You never know. Plans can change. Now I opened up an opportunity for what? Follow up. Follow up. That's it. So now I send him a nice thank you card. Now I put him on a mailing list. Now I can keep in touch. Now I can build relationship with them through social, through direct mail, through phone calls, through text. And I'll do it in a very soft, non-pushy, non-salesy way. Here's the problem with follow-up. Most follow-up is obnoxious and annoying and doesn't produce good results because it's about the agent. It's about the company. It's about what benefits the agent. I will teach you principles of follow-up that benefit the seller, that talk about the seller, that connects with the seller, that's interesting and entertaining to the seller. It's a very different paradigm. And it's way more effective. Because now I'm opening conversation. Because now I'm providing value. Now I'm giving something of interest. Look at this broadcast right now. I could just be here standing and telling you, come join the boot camp. Instead, I said, let me teach you some cool stuff. I mean, some of you still will not join the boot camp. And we'll have the same conversation a year from now. And a year from now, you're going to come to me and say, I should have, fuck. I should have listened to that guy. But that's cool. You can implement this. You can do this. I teach you. I give you something that interests you, that benefits you. That's my mission. Some will become my clients. Awesome. Love you guys. And some will not. And that's cool too. I am not attached to the outcome. I do my best to deliver here and every week, you know me, I get all fired up. Some of it might be the espresso. I get all passionate. I want to teach you. I don't hold anything back. You can ask me any question you want. But I'm not attached. If you're not attached, if you just provide value, if you just keep in touch, be entertaining, be interesting, be helpful, spread the goodwill, that's the whole secret. Now, the strategy also requires repetition. You need to be persistent. It's going to be more than just one letter or one email or one text. But if you combine those, some, not all, but some of these folks will become your clients. That's my commitment to you to show you how it's done. Okay? All right. So, Toyota, my official apology if I bash your Corollas. They make fine cars. My wife loves the Lexus. She wants a new one. You know, we got the convertible about two years ago, something like that. So, she's hinting there's a new model. 
hardtop bread. So, we shall see. Sam has a good question, a little off topic here. After texting expires, I will get, we aren't selling, thanks. A lot I'm curious about my reply. Shoot them a quick video, ask to drop off resume, thanks. See you at the bootcamp. We will get into this in detail, Sam, during the bootcamp. But the quick reply is this, even if they answer, just like I, I mentioned a little while ago, that's a conversation. So I would just say thanks, don't push it too much. You don't want to come across as too needy, too desperate, or too salesy, too aggressive. But I want to open the door for future conversations. So I'll say, sure, no problem, understand. And you can do one of two things. Hey, if you had a buyer who was absolutely perfect match, can I at least send them your way? Would that be okay? That's one option. The second option would be no problem. Would you let me know if your plans change, please? That's it. I just want a conversation. Now again, I, I'm not attached to how they respond because statistically I know that some of these folks will be back on the market no matter what they tell me. If they respond to the text, the probability just went a little bit higher. Does that make sense, Sam? So as long as you keep the conversation flowing and as long as you can open all these channels, if you can, now do the best you can with what you got. If you have the phone number, great. If you don't, still communicate. Okay? So keep the conversation going. Keep it a conversation, not a sales pitch, not a pushy script, not a needy, desperate agent gunning for a listing. Sure, if they qualify and if you click and if they are realistic and motivated and if you know you can help them, absolutely help them. And at that point, if I have to demonstrate my confidence and be in control, I will do that. But I will never do it in a way that I would manipulate somebody or push them. Or worse, try to make them decide. I understand though, their decision is not going to be based on logic. So I will not uh, cool them off or confuse them with too much logic because that's not where it lies. It lies in the psychology, it lies in the emotions. Because just like their Willingness not to move is not based on logic at all. It's based on emotion. I know that emotion can change. Are you with me? Make sense? They will justify with logic and we'll work on that as well. There is a time where you need to present comps, you need to present net sheet, days on the market, all that. That's a logical part. But it comes in later once the emotion is in place, the excitement, the hope, the possibility. Without it, you don't have a motivation. Christopher would like to know, does the new expired book come in the mail on marching orders day or by its first session on January 10th? Good question, Christopher. We received the final proof from the printer, who is a local printer here near Washington, D.C. My goal is to ship it this week to you. Depending on your location, we ship priority U.S. mail. So I want you to get it as soon as possible. You don't need it for the marching order session we have on Thursday. It's not necessary. However, I want you to get it as soon as possible so you will have a window about two weeks between our marching order session on Thursday and our first session on January to go through it, get familiar with it, plus there will be some homework. So that by the time we have the first official class, the first actual boot camp class, I don't want you to skip Thursday, it's very important because we're going to lay a foundation for it. You're going to have some stuff that you need to do, put some systems in place so we can build on that. So you'll read the book, you will deploy things and we're going to start in January. So you will have time. There will be plenty of time. And plus, you know, it's 111 pages, 12 size print, probably hour and a half, two hours at the most of reading. Good reading though. It requires a cup of lovely tea, a fireplace, and a roaring fire by which you're going to consume the brilliance of Barino and his latest creation, the Expired Plus 5.0. <laughs> All right, Sam says, perfect, you're the man. Okay, very good. All right, my friends, good session today. Maron, it is 1.06. We've been here for an hour. Well, thank you for being here all. Sticking around, I hope this was helpful. Here's what's going to happen next. Either you're going to make a decision to do the boot camp. Awesome. Would love to have you. We're going to keep it open for a little while. Jump on, get the materials. Let's get going. I'll talk to you on Thursday on a live session. Or no, let me rephrase it. Yes, that's the marching orders. But because you're going to be part of the path, join us on a Real Estate 911. Those are very interesting sessions, very intimate sessions. Where instead of doing webinars and doing coaching sessions, we're going to get on the phone. And we're going to have a conversation. So if there's a pressing question, if there's a situation, if there's anything I can help you with, we're going to talk. You have direct access to me. These are live sessions on the phone. So you're going to have access to it if you join us today. Now. Either you will do the boot camp, good decision, 
I won't let you down. I promise you will enjoy the class. I, I will deliver results. That's my commitment to you. And hold me to it. Or you say, I don't want to do the boot camp with for 197. It's a crazy choice, crazy decision. But I've been on pitches and webinars and presentations before. I didn't buy. Sometimes I regretted it. More often than not, it was a stupid decision because even one idea that would get me one list day would have been money well spent. But I digress. I'm not here to pressure you. I'm not here to sell you on it. I think many of you see the value in it. But the second choice I want you to do is at least implement this on your own. Yes, it's going to be a little more frustrating. It's going to take a little more time. You will have more rejection. Probably there'll be some, some zigzagging you have to do and probably ask me some questions. But at least do that because you see the potential. If you have five, ten expireds a day, I mean, fuck me, that's a lot of opportunities. You with me? So at least do this. And there'll be a third group of you that'll be like, oh, that was entertaining. Yes, I will do it. Yes, I will implement it. Ah, let's have lunch. The next thing you know, it's December 2019. And if you're still in the business, you're going to look back and say, wait a second, I should have done that with that crazy guy, Barino, with that weird accent and that bad potty mouth. Which group do you belong in? It is not the words and it is not the thoughts. It is the actions that will determine where you're going to be a year from now. Where do you want to be? 197. That's all it takes. Small investment. Tiny. And even that is guaranteed. And if you stay on the path, it's just 197. Cancel in time. There's no long-term contracts. You're not obligated to any of that. But imagine if you had access to the latest systems. If you had access to, I'll be humble, one of the best coaches in the world. If you had a group of agents just like you who are there not to compete with you, but to support you, to inspire you, to share their ideas, where could you be? Forget a year from now. Where could you be three months from now? Where could you be? How much money? What kind of future would you be able to build for you and the people that matter to you? It's that little decision sometimes, that little small step that can make all the difference in the world. It did in my life. In my life, it was meeting Art. His name was Art. I was dead broke, so my broker took pity on me. He says, dude, either get out or do something. And in one of the little seminars, I met Art Scott, a Remax agent whose entire strategy was to call expired listings. That's all he would do. There was no expired package, no mailing, nothing. He would just call like a machine. But what was brilliant was not his approach or his technique or his script or none of that. What opened my eyes is talk to people who are in the process, who are already doing something. That was that little step that opened up the entire new door for me. And then I developed the system. I developed the package. I perfected it. I developed the communication, the language, the sequence, all that. And now I'm giving it to you piece by piece. We're going to build it all together with the brand new stuff. That's why I rewrote it before we launched the bootcamp. I want you to have the latest tools, the latest information, the most effective. Now, some of it is very old school. Calling people is old school. Knocking on the door is old school. But we're not going to measure it new or old. We're going to measure it effective. We're going to measure it by results. And yes, some of it will involve social media, as you see. It's part of the strategy. If you want to go advanced, if you want more, and if you're willing to do the extra, take the extra step, I'll show you how to do that. And you're going to be very lonely in that little group of people who are willing to do that. Because not a whole lot of agents, not, not only do they know how to do it, they forget about knowing how to do it well, they're not willing to. Because there are still a lot of agents in this industry who say a lot. But if you start analyzing, they don't do a whole lot. And it is the action that at the end makes all the difference. My dear friends, would love to see you in the bootcamp. GoBorino.com slash bootcamp is the URL. Come join us. It's going to be four weeks of very intense work. Four weeks of rebuilding your thinking, your systems, your action, your business, and your life, your future. Very tall order for me, but I'm willing to take it on. I'm passionately excited about your future. So come join us. For my PATH students and those who join us on the bootcamp, we have a real estate 911 tomorrow. Call me. Let's talk. See how I can help you. The rest of you, I will see on Thursday on our marching orders orientation class where we put systems in place you're going to need 
I'm going to give you homework, I'm going to give you assignments, and by God, do those assignments. Because if you thought the Borino is all just jokes and fun, you haven't seen me yell at people. You haven't seen me got really with my whip and my sergeant's hat. But sometimes that's what it takes. I'm going to kick your ass. I'm going to get you there one way or another. I promise you that. So don't quit on me and I won't quit on you. Okay? Thanks for being here today. I wish you all a phenomenal, lovely Tuesday and awesome rest of the week. I'll talk to you all next week. Have a great week. I'll talk to you soon. Let's go get them. Bye, everybody.